hoping that it could add much to our patients. So to conclude, actually, multiple myeloma was considered by us to be a chronic kidney disease, reluctantly treated, fatal, and a hematologist's problem. That's not how it is today. Today it's an acute kidney injury. It's an emergency. It's quite hopeful, and it is the nephrologist's job. So I was hoping to tell you that this was going to be the end of the story, but I'm sorry, Superman, this is just the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mohammed, for a lovely story. Thank you, and well done. I really enjoyed it. Any questions? We can take one or two quick questions, please. Dr. Hella. For Dr. Mohammed, how, how many of your patients you are confronted with uh, in this early stage? Very, very, how, how, uh, how many, uh, the figure? the percentage of the presentation of, uh, of the multiple myeloma in the very early stage, so as to, to, uh, to those presenting give, with kidney disease, you mean? emergency treatment to them. You mean those presenting with kidney disease? Yeah. Oh, well, um, on initial presentation, it's about 20, 40 per 20 to 40 percent are the figures that you'll find in the literature. Later on, about 50 percent will be the total figure. So at presentation, 20 to 40 percent but along the course of therapy, about 50% will get one form of kidney injury or the other, and about 10 to 20% will reach severe enough uh, kidney injury to require dialysis. But in your literature, in your clinical practice, how, how many in your university? Well, I, I don't know how many the hematologists see, but I can tell you this. I can tell you that um, me and lots of my fr friends have actually been talking for quite a long time that we are diagnosis a new, diagnosing a new patient with multiple myeloma once every one or two weeks. It's becoming horrific. I don't know if this is just my impression, but I've also talked to uh, Wissam, our pathologist, and she said that she's been seeing um, horrifically increasing numbers of patients with multiple myeloma. It could be actually because of exposure to insecticides or whatever, but I can't really give you... Uh, Dr. Ahmed, the last question. Keep the question short, give the answer. Even it short. is a very short question, and uh, because I will let the mic, please, <laughs> chairperson, uh, to Dr. Hishem. Uh, my, uh, my comment uh, uh, to review your uh, uh, recommendation that a free light chain is the number one test for diagnosis because it is not. Uh, for diagnosis. There are major criteria and minor criteria to diagnose, and it's a very good test uh, for follow-up, of course, because a, I got that message that the, the gold standard diagnostic test is free light chain estimation, I think, which is wrong. Okay. So I know that, uh, please, yeah, review that. Review yeah, that. thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll let, let's make it more clear. Of course, we know that there are several uh, criteria, sets of criteria for diagnosing uh, multiple myeloma. Um, the International Myeloma Work Group has defined new uh, ways of screening for multiple myeloma, and they decided that actually we shouldn't be testing urine anymore, and that what, what we should be doing is doing a protein electrophoresis and free light chains and immunofixation at the same time. And this is how you screen for multiple myeloma. To reach a final diagnosis of multiple myeloma, you must have a diagnosis from the bone marrow. So no, free light chains, an abnormal ratio of free light chains does not diagnose multiple myeloma. It helps you diagnose multiple myeloma, but of course it's not a final diagnosis, and it is useful for, diagnos for diagnosing, not just for monitoring. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Before we close this session, thank you, thank you, Mohammed. I'd like to personally thank Sara el -Baz, Hussein Shaheen and Amr Hussein for organizing an absolutely outstanding ESNT Congress. So thank you very much and well done. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to present again on behalf of the Global Kidney Academy uh, to Dr. Hussein Shaheen the special innovation in education award for his major contribution to education in nephrology in Egypt. So well done.
They are begun now for the Gawais and Shadat. Thank you very much. We've closed the session.